Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. My name is Marcio. Today we are discussing a topic I'm extremely passionate about it. And to be honest, I have spent a lot of my career working on it, which is back-end development. In this video, I'm going in full details about what is back-end development, where it sits or how back-end development fits in the whole application development life cycle, what you should do to become a back-end developer, and also I'll be giving you guys my own opinion about a good roadmap for anyone to become a back-end engineer or a back-end developer. And this is a roadmap for 2023. What is backend development? This word or this phrase seems to be something really mysterious and complicated, and it brings those images to my mind though about those hackers. They know how to do things that nobody else knows, but that's not true. Backend development is something really simple, and I classify backend development, which is a development for any kind of applications, let's say a web application or a mobile application, but these are the parts of the system that are not visible to the user, and the end user has no interactions with those parts of the system. It may sound a little bit complicated, but it is not. I'm going to give you guys a few examples and we're going to see that it's completely simple and quite interesting to work on. Let's take a look at those examples here. My first example here for you guys is Twitter. As you guys can see here, this is my Twitter. And Twitter is a simple social network, I would say simple, because it enables us to share messages, if I'm not mistaken up to 140 characters. It's a SMS style messaging. We can write anything we want. We can also share images and videos. And there is also the possibility to follow people and to be followed by people as well. So there is this one too many relationship as there are for any other social network. This is the interface here for the web application. There is also a mobile application for Twitter. You guys probably have seen, uh, it works for iPhone and Android as well. So pretty cool. And the idea is exactly the same. So just sending messages, posting tweets, and also sharing photos and videos as well. This is the front end. This is what the end user sees. The user only sees the user interface, and then we can simply type something. I'm typing something, and then I can share my tweet. But there are lots of things that happen in the back end that the end user can't see, and the front user has no idea what's going on. So let's take a look at the back end of, of Twitter, and this is a blog from Twitter where they explain a little bit about their backend services. What do they have in the backend? They say here that they have database or multiple databases. They have a Hadoop, which is an open source framework for processing and distributing workloads or distributed computing. This is what Hadoop is. And they also have a bunch of other stuff such as key value data store. It's another kind of database. I would say it's a NoSQL database, Mesos. So front end, we already seen. They have messaging services and they classify also other services. They also have caching services. There are lots of things going on in the back end. For example, for Twitter, which is our first example here. Um, just take a look a little bit more here. So they also classify as backend a bunch of other stuff, such as network traffic, data center, and a few other stuff here, probably CDNs as well, and also storage. We can classify as backend engineering or backend development, everything that is behind the front end or everything which is behind the user interface. In my example here, I'm only considering backend development on things that are actually directly linked to the application itself, such as APIs, web services, databases, message queuing, and I don't know, maybe cloud, cloud computing and those kinds of things. I'm excluding those DevOps stuff or site reliability engineering. These things I'm, I'm, I'm just chopping apart. I'm simply focusing here about the engineering part or the software development part. This is Twitter. Now, we have seen that there are lots of stuff going on in here. They have the storage here. Just want to read it quickly. They have Hadoop clusters running both compute and HDFS. It's a file server, Manhattan. 
that's a key value data store. They have clusters of MySQL. It's a relational database. They have a blob store because they need to store all of those images and videos in a separate uh, file system, I would say, because these things, they should not go to the database because it's not a structured data set. And they have caching for having in-memory data, so that can speed up the access to those pages, those tweets, or whatever information they need to return quickly to the user. And also messaging, because that's another core technology. Sometimes we need to process things asynchronously, so messaging is a way to do these things. My second example here is Uber. I believe this is a well-known application. This is the web application. To be honest, I have never used this one. I always use the mobile phone application, as you guys can see here. So I'm pretty sure you guys are well acquainted with Uber. We can book a trip on Uber saying, where are you going from and the place where we're going to. And then Uber will do the calculations, see the routes, and charge us a price for that ride. The UI here is way more complicated than for Twitter, for example. They have this map here where they plot the route or the possible routes, and they try to pick the best route. Also, they need to locate the nearest driver for that ride. And all of those things, they are rendered by the UI or by the front end, but there are lots of things, great things happening in the back end. Let's take a look at the back end here. I found the their engineering blogs and they have lots of things going on here. I would say that they probably have something similar to Twitter here on the infrastructure. They also have messaging systems, databases, um, blob store, caches, because all of these things, they are pretty common on backend services. Getting one of the services here or a few things that they use. They say here, uh, MySQL to my rocks, migration, Uber's distributed data store. So they use a data store. Probably used to use MySQL and now they migrated to this MyRox product, which it's probably another relational database. Another point here is for uh, deploying and storing images. So that's not from the right application. That's more for Uber Eats. Remember that Twitter has the same problem. They need to store all of those images and video files that the user uploads. Uber Eats will have the same problem here because all the restaurants, they need to upload the, those images from the food, the dishes, and also sometimes videos. And they need to store that information in a blob store. It should not go to a database. Uber also has some machine learning mechanism to help optimizing the push notifications because remember whenever we have that map it's kind of in real time it locates all the drivers and all the routes it needs to keep pushing information to the mobile phones from the for drivers and also for the riders so they can see who is nearby them and also have that notification from locality as well. Another service here is the uh, analytics. This is big for these companies as well. So they need to know what's going on, what kind of data they have, what kind of usage their app or the backend services have. So they also use this analytics data. Yeah, those things also need to go and be processed as a batch information, also need to be spread amongst other services. They also need to push messages from here and there. As you guys can see, there is this commonality between almost all backend services. They all need those kinds of APIs, services, monitoring, databases, blob storage or block storage, caches, and so on and so forth. This is a very nice, unique field to work as a backend engineer because we can have contact with lots of different technologies, architectures, and the nice thing is that all that knowledge is transferable. Doesn't matter too much on, on which company you are working for. The knowledge you have now can also be transferred to any other company that works on a similar architecture or even working on a different architecture, but the final product will probably have the same properties as we saw here between Twitter and Uber. I also have here a story for you guys. That was a conversation I had with a teammate many years ago, and we were discussing about the backend development, and this guy, he just turned to me and 
he was complaining, oh man, yeah, backend development, it's kind of plumbing. Nobody cares and nobody sees what, what's happening there. So people only are concerned about the front end because that's what the end user sees, the UI, the web application or the mobile application. And I told him, yeah, man, I, I really agree with you. It's kind of plumbing because you're right, you're not wrong. So people don't see what happens in the back end. And sometimes it, it's quite hard to explain what's going on. But one point is back end is extremely crucial for any application. If that backend doesn't work, nothing will work. And for that, I also have another story. It was around two years ago when I moved to the place I'm living right now. And the first day I moved here, I just turned on the, the tap or the faucet, depending on which country you are, and there was no water. Then I had to call the landlord or the agency, and then they spoke to the water company, and then they came here two hours later and they turned the water on. Yes, plumbing is not something that people usually care about, but whenever it doesn't work, you are really done. My illustration here is as I had those problems with those pipes on my house with that plumbing same thing happens to any system if your back end doesn't work the user will experience latency long times for the request to complete maybe the payment will be duplicated which is horrible and unacceptable getting back to our examples for twitter and uber uber could be doing duplicated charges and twitter could also be duplicating those tweets and pushing things that shouldn't be pushed again it's crucial that the backend works fine so the application can behave accordingly. Okay, now that we have a great understanding of backend development, I'm gonna give you guys my own roadmap for becoming a backend engineer in 2023. Let's go. First thing you have to learn is a programming language to work on the back end. Remember that I told you I'm more focused here on the application development side and not too much on the infrastructure or site reliability or DevOps. It's basically on the software development phase. There are many programming languages on the market, but I limited myself here and I picked the most popular programming languages that the market uses right now. We want to be going crazy and trying to learn everything that may or may not be of use whenever you go and try to get a job. Another point here on the programming language is that I'm picking also a general purpose programming language instead of just going for something more specific. So the market for those programming languages, they will be wider than if you are going to a specific niche. The first programming language that I chose is Java. Why? That's because Java is a strongly typed static programming language. It's a very powerful way to work on a project and catching things during the compile time instead of getting errors by deployment time. So, and also Java is widely used by the market. Java has a huge community as well, so you can find help anywhere you go on the internet, pretty much. Java is also extremely versatile and it is mature. Another great point is that there are lots of jobs for Java developers. And in fact, there is a really huge demand for Java developers. Language number two, it's Python. Python, it is a dynamic type 8 programming language, but it became very popular in the last years as well. So this is another great option to go for. Language number three is JavaScript. JavaScript is a kind of a wildcard language. It works both for the front end and also for the back end. So it's native for the browser and it also has a few frameworks for back end development, such as Node.js. Some people will love it, some people will hate it, but it's also extremely used by the market. Language number four, it is Golang. It's another language I really love. Golang was designed at Google and it has been growing ever since it was created. Golang is similar to Java. It is a static and strongly typed programming language. It shares the same properties as Java. So the syntax is also uh, looks like C, but with memory safety and also emphasis on multi-threading. Okay, there are many other languages that I did not mention here, such as C, C++, PHP, C Sharp, or R. I did not include those languages because they are kind of niche or really specific to some use cases. I'm not saying that they, they are bad at all, but I just 
try to pick for you guys the most widely used and those languages that will give you guys more job potential. Now, which programming language you should choose? So as I gave you guys my four main options here, it is a little bit difficult because programming languages, they are also linked to personal preference. Some people, they prefer static and strongly typed languages, just like me. I love those type of languages. I believe they provide us safety and security when recording. Some other people will prefer more dynamic languages such as Python, Ruby, or JavaScript. If I would to give you guys my personal preference here, I would go with Java. Next thing to learn is Linux. Why? Because Linux is extremely important and there are around 80% of all servers in the internet are Linux based. So it is extremely important to know the Linux operating system. And you should learn all the basic commands, how to create a folder, how to list a folder, how to see the contents of a text file, how to find files and so on and so forth. Next step is databases. So databases are extremely important as you guys saw on the Twitter and Uber example I gave you guys. All companies and or all products they need to store there structured data, databases are extremely important. You have to learn relational databases such as MySQL and PostgreSQL, and also NoSQL databases. And for those NoSQL databases, there are many options such as Google Big Table, AWS DynamoDB, Apache Cassandra, and CouchDB. These are a few of them. Another point you have to learn here is cloud computing. Cloud computing has been or has become a norm nowadays. Nobody or no company owns their own data center. Now people simply sign up to the cloud and spin up their infrastructure in the cloud. Cloud is extremely important. Cloud options here, we have AWS, GCP and Azure. These are the biggest three players. And I have a video about why you should go for Google Cloud as well. So you guys can take a look, but you cannot go wrong if you go for any of these three options here. Next thing to learn is a messaging or an eventing system. And for this one, I would recommend you guys going for Kafka. It's an Apache project as well. You guys can take a look at the link in the description below. And lastly, you guys have to learn system design. And this is how to design a large distributed system. All of those things that uh, we spoke about, system design is a way to get the requirements and translate those requirements into a design, such as the system will work and behave the way it's intended to, which I mean by that is we have web servers, we have our message queuing, we have our databases, we have our blob storage. So system design comprises everything about designing a system like that. Now it's time for my summary here. The first thing I want to ask you guys is please do not feel overwhelmed and do not fear the sheer amount of information I gave you guys. And that's because what I gave you guys was a roadmap and this is not something that will be achieved in one week, one month, two or three months. That's gonna be a journey for you guys, which you will start now in 2023, but you always be learning throughout your career. So don't stress out too much about learning everything at once because it's impossible, it is normal just to go step by step. I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. Please do not forget to like my video, subscribe, and also push the notification button so you won't miss any of my videos. I'll see you guys in the next video.